All right. Welcome to the 2018 Best Smartphone Awards, the MKBHD reaction video. Instead of doing my own personal little video telling you my top five favorite phones of the year, why not do a reaction video to the GOAT, the greatest of all time smartphone reviewer, and go over his opinions and give you mine instead, because let's face it, we all have different opinions, different preferences, and I'm not gonna agree with everything he says. So let's get right to it. First category is best big smartphone. Okay, so obviously there's a typo in this. Brendan, Vin, if you're watching this, you're probably gonna get fired. But um, best big smartphone, smartphone. Unless MKBHD is going for the Italian market, smartphone. But I'm not gonna hit him for this because let's face it, if you watch my videos, like every video, there's like 45 different typos. Phone of 2018 goes to Samsung Galaxy Note 9. And this one's final. Okay. Screen. That is the obvious pick. I expected this to happen every single year. The Note basically wins that category because of being able to pack all the hardware features in one device while including an S Pen. But you have to remember at the end of the day, probably about 10% of the people who buy the Note 9 actually use the S Pen. If you're a power user, someone who draws sketches or signs a lot of documents, you're gonna gravitate towards the Note 9. You're gonna pay whatever it costs. But I think for everybody else who doesn't use the S Pen, you're better off buying the Mate 20 Pro. You're just getting a lot better features or a lot better hardware in a device that's smaller and easier to to use. Plus, you also get that front-facing um, fingerprint scanner, which is not the greatest right now, but it's kind of cool to use. Next up category is best small smartphone, smartphone. best compact phone of the year. You see, small smartphones are kind of a rare breed nowadays. All throughout everyone's lineup, phones have just gotten bigger across the board, but you can still do great things in compact packages. Not as compact as phones used to be a couple years ago, but still, there are some great small phones out there. Also okay, so before he picks his, I'm gonna tell you my picks for the best small smartphones. For Android, 100%, it's the Sony Xperia XZ2 Compact. Anything five inches and below is, for me, considered a small smartphone. If you look at all the Android devices that were released this year, small is 5.5 and above, 5.5 to 5.8. If you truly want a small device, you gotta go down to something like this. They managed to do this while keeping the exact same hardware that's in the bigger XZ2 in a form factor that is just really, really easy to hold. The XZ2 is a 5.8 inch device. The XZ2 Compact is five inches. You still have the same camera. You still have an amazing LCD display. You have great battery life in such a small form factor, which is really hard to do these days on small devices. Now, if you're buying an iPhone, you're, I don't think you should look at something like the 10s because again, it's 5.8 inches. You need to go for something like the iPhone 8, which is 4.7, you're still getting the same great hardware, and most importantly, you're saving a lot of money on a device that would cost you a lot more if you were to go with the iPhone 10. By the way, I think this is the closest contested category. Some really good ones here. But the winner for best small smartphone in 2018 is gonna go to iPhone XS. This one's got a five. <sighs> Look, the iPhone XS is an amazing phone, but we have to ask ourselves, what is a small smartphone? Is the new small form factor 5.5 to 5.8? Or have we not forgotten about the devices that I just mentioned? I know Sony is not a very popular phone around the world, but it's still buyable. And it's still a phone that's five inches and you're getting all the exact same features as those 5.5 to 5.8 inch devices. I just think it's an overlooked device and one that is definitely worth the mention best camera. So for some people, like me, having a great camera is super important in a... Okay, so before he tells us his picks, these are my picks and I have three of them. For best camera, for like just the general consumer, 110% the Pixel 3. It takes amazing photos, Google's computational photography is top notch, it has the best software when it comes to that type of stuff, hands down. But, if you're someone who doesn't mind being more of an enthusiast or like manually configuring the settings while you're taking a photo, I gotta give it to the Mate 20 Pro. This has three lenses, three different focal lengths that you can definitely play with to take the desired picture of your, of your liking. If I want a wide picture, I have that option. If I wanna use telephoto up to three times, I can do that with the Mate 20 Pro. And it also has that third lens so you have that depth sensor to take po proper portrait modes. Also, night mode on the Mate 20 Pro is still one of the best on a smartphone. The only area that it kind of lacks is dynamic range. You still get that more dynamic range on the iPhone XS or even the Pixel 3. Now, if it's just video you're looking after, you gotta go with the iPhone XS. Hands down, this still has the best video on a smartphone you can buy. It's just the best. Even slow motion, 240 frames per second, looks the best on the iPhone. 
this camera and a smartphone in 2018 is gonna go to the Pixel 3. And make Obvious. I mean, we know Marquez loves the Pixel 3. I love the Pixel 3 and I agree with him. If you're a regular consumer just looking for a great shot straight out of the camera, no work, no effort, Pixel 3 is the way to go. In second place though, I have a camera that does slightly lesser photos, but that I'd say does much better video and audio. And that is the iPhone XS. And I agree with him. For video, iPhone XS is like the best, but slightly less than other phones is kind of um, hard to put right now because the iPhone in terms of picture quality has really, really been downgraded compared to some of these Android phones that are on the market right now. I still think there's a lot of phones on this table that take regular pictures better than the iPhone XS. But like I said, and like he says, if video and good audio is your thing, the iPhone XS hands down is the phone to buy. Best battery life. And this is, this is an important one for most people because I feel like- Best battery award, let's face it, it's gonna be the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. I've reviewed this device, I've set it in my review, 4,200 milliamps, the best battery life you're gonna get. Easily a day and a half, two days if you don't put it on performance mode. The fact that you have um, the software being very aggressive so when it's in standby, it's not draining that battery too fast. The fact that you have supercharge, which is like probably the second fastest charging um, technology on the industry, faster than warp charge, just not as fast as, fast as Oppo's SuperVoc. When it comes to battery life, Huawei nailed it this year. And the winner, sneaking in at the end of the year, for best battery oh, life. Just one comment about wireless charging. The wireless charging on the Mate 20 Pro is kind of gimmicky. It does work, but like it is super slow. Like it'll take you forever to charge your friend's device. I think the only thing it's good for is if you have some sort of accessory, maybe it's a watch, maybe it's headphones, you can place it on the top of it, it'll charge that. But to charge another phone, super gimmicky. I've had actually ever in a phone, but of course of 2018, is the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. This one, I don't wanna say it shocked me because I knew it would be good. I just did. Oh, it shocked me, all right. Like one day it ended with like 65 to 70% battery life left. And I was like, this is not normal. There's like voodoo inside of here making this happen. Honorable mention will go to Red what? Hydrogen One. This phone, it is really? obviously okay. pretty thick. Okay, okay. Why is that even in the best smartphone awards? That thing was like complete vaporware. That thing was going on for like, what, since 2017? I don't even think it's a 2018 phone anymore. The fact that everybody got it, it basically didn't do the things it was supposed to do. It ran like crap. It's using a very outdated version of Android. It costs an arm and a leg. The camera is ridiculous. The only thing you're getting is a phone that looks like it got hit with a grenade. I don't think this should be in the smartphone awards, but hey, you know what? He has it, he wants to talk about it, I get it. He has a very big connection to Red, he has a Red camera. So I understand where he's going with this, but I think for the general consumer, this is not even on the radar but it's packing a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, making it officially the biggest battery cell I've ever held in my pocket, or at least in a smartphone anyway. But I mean, if you're gonna include that phone, you might as well get all those Chinese phones from, from China, like the Ocatel 10,000 milliamp battery, include that in this review as well. I just, I just don't think this should be in here. Okay, this is an interesting category because quite, when it comes down to it, no one is gonna have the same opinion. I mean, design is a very subjective thing, but the way I value design is very specific. I take not only the way the phone looks, I also take the engineering capabilities or production that they put into the phone itself. So for me, the best design phone of 2018 definitely goes to the Galaxy Note 9. This is still a big device, but it's also a small device. If you think about 6.4 inch devices in previous years, they would just be huge compared to this. Samsung was able to create a 6.4 inch device while including an S Pen, while maintaining a headphone jack. The first note to have dual stereo speakers, which sound great. You still have a front facing camera with facial recognition so you can log in. You have a useless Bixby button, which is an additional button that other phones don't have. And basically you have every single feature you can think of packed into a device with one of the best displays on the market. There's also one key area about that display that other manufacturers are having troubles doing. When you start slow sloping edges, you get this kind of weird effect when you look at the, the sides of it. The, the, the colors kind of tint or they don't just look normal. This is especially true on the Sony Xperia XZ3. It happens on the Mate 20 Pro. When it comes to AMOLED panels, Samsung has absolutely nailed it. So not only are you getting attractive design without a notch, you're also getting a form factor that pretty much includes every single hardware feature while maintaining a beautiful device. Now, if we're just talking about looks, putting lipstick on a pig, then my second pick would obviously be the Oppo Find X. And I'm not saying this is a bad phone, it's obviously not. There's a lot of great things going for it, like that super Voc charging, which is like 
unbeatable in the industry of charging your smartphone. It also created this device where when you'd use the camera, the top portion would pop up and you're able to take a selfie. I thought that was pretty cool. But let's face it, this is a prototype in some ways because, you know, two, three years down the road or even a year down the road, I wanna know how well that little mechanism is gonna be working then. It's probably not gonna be working as well as it did the first day you got it. All right, let's see what MKBHD has to the say. The design of the year for 2018 is gonna to go to the Oppo Find 10. Best budget phone in 2018. So best budget phone, this this is like, what's budget to a lot of people? Is it $200 and less? Is it best budget flagship phone? Is it best budget mid-range phone? This goes across a lot of categories. I'm gonna say, if you're looking for the best budget phone, I'd be looking at something like the Honor 8X or the Xiaomi Mi Note 6. One of these devices for about 200 bucks will basically be able to do whatever you want for a very low price point. If I was talking maybe more so mid-range to like lower flagship, 100% the Pocophone F1. This pretty much like shocked the world when this came out. There was so much hype surrounding this phone, it was absolutely insane. But I wouldn't buy this if you're in North America, it's missing a couple of bands, it just won't work as the way it should in terms of uh, cellular connectivity. I mean, it was amazing that Xiaomi can create a phone like this for such a low price point. I mean, Snapdragon 845, lots of RAM, a pretty decent display, a decent camera, the list goes on. But if I was to pick like the best budget flagship phone, it'd be a tie. It'd be a tie between the OnePlus 6T and the Galaxy S9. I'd get the Galaxy S9 if you value a better camera, a better display, and of course a smaller form factor, or I'd get the 6T if you prefer better battery life, insane performance, faster updates, and of course that crazy, crazy, awesome community that it has. So those would be the two areas that I'd be looking at between those two devices. So the winner for best budget phone of 2018 goes to, you guessed it, the Xiaomi Boom. Phone. Boom, not surprised. All right, next up is the award I hate to have to give, but I have to give it. It's the bust, the biggest bust. This is my favorite category. I don't know why you hate to have to give it because this is the most fun category, but I get what you have to do. You gotta be nice. But for me, the bust of the year is probably the LG G7 ThinQ. And it's not because it's a bad phone, it's decent when it comes to everyday performance, but it just didn't really resonate with anybody. It didn't sell well. The, the actual software is very bad. I mean, like it's very cartoony, it's very buggy. Um, you know, the cameras on the back are not bad. Instead of putting dual speakers, they just put a resonating chamber inside of there and just made it very loud. Um, I just don't think LG's on the right track to making great smartphones. I mean, and also the design language of the phone itself was was very utilitarian. It was, it just looked like a slab. They didn't put any, effort into the overall process of creating a good smartphone. So I think from like a consumer standpoint, it's definitely the LG G7. Bust of the year from like not selling well or just ugly, I don't really have one. I think most phones that came out this year did a pretty good job, but if I had to pick one, it would definitely be the G7. No doubt the bust of the year for smartphones in 2018 was the red yes, hydrogen one. It finally. was so frustrating. So again, I, I just gave M uh, Marquez some slack for mentioning it earlier in the video, but this would actually be the perfect category for it. It was a phone that was released that no one ever got, had so many issues, people got it and just, they'd have to get sent a second phone because they the first production wasn't ready on time and then the issues with the software and the screen just being gimmicky. This is the category where the red belongs and you know what? Marquez, you absolutely nailed it. All right, next up, the most improved award. This goes okay. to the phone. So I thought about this for a little while when I was doing my own personal best smartphones. Like if there was one manufacturer that really came out ahead this year, who would it be? Because the problem is all these smartphones right now are really close to each other and they're all really good. But if I had to choose one phone or one company specifically for the most improved smartphones, I would definitely have to give it to Sony. They came out this year with three devices, which in my opinion is too many, the XZ2 and the XZ3. But this was the first year they decided to change the design of their phones. If you guys don't remember everything from like the Z1 to the Z5 or even the X, 
I don't even remember the X1 or whatever it was called, was pretty much the same square slab. And you know what? There's a lot of calls of people behind them that actually love that design. But this was the first year that they decided to take advantage of it and change their whole design language. They came out with the XZ2 and XZ Compact, which kind of looked like the phone from 2017, not 2018. People were happy about it. Others weren't happy about the fingerprint scan replacement. But overall, it looked like that Sony was trying to improve their design language. Then later in the year, they finally created a phone that was more acceptable to 2018 standards with the XZ3. They created this beautiful device and every person that I've lent this phone to or has reviewed this device that I know personally has really enjoyed the phone. Now it's hard to recommend it over something like the, the Galaxy Note 9 or the Huawei Mate 20 Pro, but if you were to buy this on a contract or if it was on sale or if you, you know, you, whatever reason behind it that you wanted it, you wouldn't be disappointed with it. The camera, even though it's a single lens, is still great. It's not top three, but it's definitely top five. It has good battery life. The screen is gorgeous. It has great software. In fact, when it comes down to software, Sony's doing a better job than a lot of these other manufacturers that you see on the table. Well, I mean like minus Apple and the Pixel. They are one of the only other manufacturers putting out timely updates to their smartphones. And that's pretty impressive for a mobile company that's not doing so hot right now. So for me, most improved award goes to the Sony Xperia XZ3. Goes to Razer Phone 2. And they earned this award. Mm, see, I don't agree with that. See, I don't phone. agree with that. The, I mean, look, Razer did introduce a phone in a brand new category, a gaming category, but the Razer Phone number one is so similar to Phone 2. The only thing that was changed from Phone 1 to Phone 2 was a few things that people complained about Phone 1. I definitely wouldn't have given it to the Razer Phone 2. I don't think that was the best pick, but you know what? This is an award ceremony, it's subjective, and everybody's gonna have a different opinion. Media and gaming. So they added a glass back for wireless charging. They dropped in a glowing RGB logo. The cameras are improved. They kept the front-facing speakers. They kept the awesome 120 hertz display, but made it brighter and then made the whole thing water resistant. Like last- See, all the things he's saying right now are things that are pretty standard on every device in 2018. Like, you know, it's not like they came out with something new or different to show the market where we said, hey, we did this from the first year. We've completely changed things to make it better or more ergonomical. They basically just improved the things that should have been there already. I guess kind of like Sony too, which makes it very subjective. Literally. Ooh. The MVP, the smartphone of Here the year. Here we go. Okay, 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 okay. Best. This is tough. Creating a smartphone of the year is very, very hard to do because what I might like might be different from somebody else. Someone might be an iPhone user. So it doesn't matter what Android device I nominate as the best smartphone, at the end of the day, you're still gonna go with an iPhone. So I'm gonna do two phones for the best smartphone of the year. And these are the two phone, well, okay. The two phones that I personally use on a daily basis because I feel comfortable recommending them to everybody. Te technically it's three phones, but I'm gonna pick two for the sake of this video. The first phone is the iPhone XS. And the reason being is because to this day, Apple still produces the best software and hardware experience on a smartphone. It's just optimized well. I can literally leave this not charged on a desk for an entire day and the battery depletion will be like nothing. It has a pretty good camera, not the best camera, amazing video, Pretty good battery life, it's easy to hold, it's comfortable to carry, it has one of the best displays you can use, it has good sound, and most importantly, it has a great app experience. To this day, there are a few things that I use this phone over an Android device because of the app experience. Instagram stories, I use a special spectrum meter with this device that no Android software is available for yet. So there's a few things that I still carry an iPhone for. But the phone that I mostly use when it comes to like typing up emails, browsing the net, playing games, and all that kind of stuff is the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. This is the phone I carry when I just don't care about battery life because I know I'm never gonna have to worry about it not charging. I love the way the chip runs in this device. It doesn't slow down. It's just super buttery fast. I love the camera. The fact that I can switch between aperture and portrait and zoom in or go wide. Having that flexibility for someone in my vicinity or the things that I do is super important. Now those are the top two phones that I carry in my pocket, but I'm gonna give an honorable mention to the Pixel 3. Sometimes I'll be swapping out the Mate 20 Pro for the Pixel 3 because of that simple camera that just takes amazing photos. Plus, as much as people don't like the, the gestures on the Pixel 3, I actually don't mind it. And also, they have done the best job of making Android look as best as possible. So those are my picks iPhone XS, Mate 20 Pro in first place with a short second with the Pixel 3. Let's hear what MKBHD has to say. 
the OnePlus okay, okay, 6T. Okay. okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. I love the OnePlus 6T, and it's hard not to make it the number one choice. But you have to think about it at the end of the day. The number one choice doesn't take price into consideration. It's the best smartphone possible. Yes, the OnePlus 6T has like some of the best performance on an Android device. It has a decent display, it's not the best, it's decent, it has a decent camera, it has a very great price tag, but it's not, still not the best smartphone. And that's what I look at for that number one category. I think if you're to say the best smartphone for 500 bucks, then yeah, I 100% agree. The OnePlus 6T fits that bill and it does it so damn well. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's definitely one of those phones that it's hard to not look at, especially when you consider the price point. It pretty much covers everything you want in a smartphone except for having the best camera. And when you think about it realistically, at the end of the day, the extra three or $400 that you pay for a smartphone is to have a slightly better display, and most importantly, to have a slightly better camera. For me, for someone who has kids, for someone who's always constantly taking picture, the camera will always be at the top, followed by the display. And then my MVP honorable mention will go to the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. Still not available in the US, and still not the best reputation of a company in the US either, but this phone. I gotta give him that, and 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 for most people in the US, like, it'd be hesitant to pick up a Huawei device, and I don't blame them. I'm from Canada, so it's available here, so it's, for, it's a lot easier for me to get access to it, and basically any consumer buying a product in Canada. But I'm glad he mentioned it, because it deserves to be mentioned. It's a phone that, um, or a company specifically, that's gone from like, a company that no one's ever heard of, to basically being the second biggest smartphone manufacturer in the world, right after Samsung. Not profits, but volume of sales. Smartphone over and over. All right, so that's basically the 2018 Smartphone Rewards featuring MKBHD. This is my reaction video. We had a lot of the same picks. Some of them I would have changed around. Funny enough, looks like I have just as many smartphones on the table as him, but <laughs> I had to substitute because uh, I need to look cool. Got a fancy iPhone 4 and a little 2G over here. But um, yeah, I think his opinions were fantastic. For a lot of people, you should definitely listen to them. Um, again, I had a few different preferences and it basically every reviewer you watch is gonna have their own preferences of the best smartphones of 2018. One thing's for sure is if you watch all of these videos, you're gonna see a specific pattern of a few devices that always get mentioned. And I think if you're looking for a smartphone phone, those are the few devices that you should be looking at because obviously they're being rated by all of us. Hope you guys enjoyed this little reaction video. It's a little bit different. MKBHD, uh, if I offended you in any way, I apologize. I'm just having a lot of fun and obviously, you know, you're the best at in the business when it comes to evaluating smartphones. So like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe to MKBHD. The guy needs some subs. He doesn't have any, okay? I'll put his, I'll put his channel in the description down below. Like the video if you liked it and I'll see you guys in the next video.